you hear a lot about CIP, Capital Improvement Projects. Basically, the city has two sources of funding in the way we spend money. You have the operating funds and we have the capital improvement dollars. Operating funds and capital improvement are about the same, two point some odd billion dollars. So we use the operating dollars purely to fund operations of the city, paying our fire department, paying our police department, fixing our streets, some of the things in public works, picking up our garbage and doing some of the recycling things. So that's the operating side. The capital improvement project is a long-term plan to discuss things that you just heard about from Dale. Um, when you hear the worst first scenario, and of course we'll relate that back to what we have here in Kingwood Drive, is that Kingwood Drive by the city of Houston has been identified as the third worst street in the city of Houston. Worst being when it looks at congestion, worst being wear and tear and things like that. Not Dave Martin's analysis, but the city of Houston. Uh, so you hear about things like a candidate project and then the scope. We'll get into a little bit about the scope and make sure that we study the data before we ever do anything. But uh, we'll get into those types of questions uh, as soon as all the presentations are done and we'll be glad to help everybody with every issue that they have. So, uh, now, uh, last thing we'll have on the agenda before we open up our Q&A is we'll have the traffic and mobility study overview just to give you a, uh, an opinion about what we're trying to do here. Is there's a lot of noise wrapped around uh, some, I guess I'll call them urban legends. And uh, there was something that hit the web or Kingwood Underground or whatever a couple of months ago and it was there were going to be an extension of Kingwood Drive through East End Park, over the lake, and into Huffman. Well, golly, that would be a heck of an expense, wouldn't it? Not only do you cause a, a major bridge to be constructed, but you have environmental issues. So, while that was on a master thoroughfare plan, what they do on a master thoroughfare plan is they examine every option under the sun. Whether it's a feasible option or not, you put it on the master thoroughfare plan. Master thoroughfare plan. So what happens is you pick that up and, and crazy stuff gets spread through the uh, different websites and people start asking questions. But that will probably never happen in Dave Martin's lifetime, and I hope I'll live for a long period of time. Thank you. So the other story is, is that uh, what are we going to do about Kingwood Drive? Daniel did a nice job of presenting some information on CIP and on words first and things like that. This is a decision that Dave Martin is not going to make. Let me repeat myself. Dave Martin will not make this decision. This is a decision for the residents of Keywood. So what we've done as residents of Keywood is I'm a data guy. I, look at, I like looking at facts and I like making data-driven decisions. So I thought it would be best to ask a couple of questions. The first question I asked was, when was the last time Keywood had a mobility study done? Well, the answer to that was 2004. And we keep talking about a lot of changes within Kingwood in 2004. We have a lot of different things taking place between four and where we are today. So when we started getting into this, we have the TURBS, the Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone, and Stan leads our TURBS, and Stan's also an engineer. I said, what a great opportunity to, for us to develop a Kingwood-specific plan that Kingwood residents are in charge of. No offense, Daniel, but not the city of Houston. Because it's our streets and it's our neighborhood. And thank you. Thank you, Robert. And we are going to determine what we do with our neighborhood. Not Dave Martin, not the city of Houston, but we the residents of Kingwood. So what I thought we would do is to lead a study and get some information, get some data, and examine every option we have available. Examine Kingwood Drive front to back. Examine North Park front to back. West Lake Houston, Woodland Hills, going over over Hamlin. There's my friend. There. There's Going over Hamlin and all variety of options, just like they did when they put the Master Thoroughfare Plan together. That said, we're going to do a highway from Kingwood Drive over to Huffman. Always made a statement. I said, I, what I want to see is the plan that goes from. 59 to 5811 Blackstone Creek Lane. That's where I, So I want to get to my house fast, so we're just going to put an elevated expressway over there and get right to my house. <laughs> that would be the day market plan, but we're not going to do the day market plan. What we're going to do is get a data-driven decision, looking at mobility and looking at every option available. And then after we do that, we're going to get the community together and have a meeting like this and start presenting the data. And the data will drive the decisions we make. If people like me love the livable forest and we moved here for a reason 
and we can take the inconvenience of, of having four lanes. We're not going to build eight lanes. I don't know where that's coming from. Eight lanes is ridiculous. But what we are, we're going to study. Now, there's a part of me that would like to focus on North Park. And the reason why you can move traffic quick on North Park is because you have no trees. You have a four-lane highway with a big ditch in the middle of it. Thank you. The problem you have with that is you have Montgomery County. So is Montgomery County interested in helping the city of Houston with mobility issues that affect Kingwood, Harris County, city of Houston residents? Probably not. So we're going to have to work really hard with Montgomery County, and we don't mind doing the research on that. So a long story to an introduction to two great people who are leading us down this path. And, uh, and we will notify the Tribune, we notify the Observer, we notify the Chronicle on everything we're going to do with this so that I'm a believer in full transparency. You don't make decisions in a vacuum, you make them as a whole. So when we study this issue, we're going to look at the folks that live on the North Park, the folks that live in the front of Kingwood, the folks that live in the back of Kingwood and all over the area to make the best decision that we can for the entirety of Kingwood. A couple of days and weeks, there's a number of instruments going up and around, and our office sent out some information on this. You'll see cameras uh, so that they video the, the flow of traffic, uh, making turns. Some of the easements that we do, when you start adding turning lanes, it gives the other two lanes the ability to go straight through, so it helps with traffic congestion. So not only are they going to look with mobility issue with cameras and tubes in the road, and they're going to study all these major intersections in and around the area, so we get a true picture of what mobility looks like and how do you address it. And as I mentioned, there'll be full transparency and I think uh, for me, the study will be probably done towards the beginning of the summer and then we'll have the opportunity to get everybody together in, whoever's interested in learning about it, and present the data and then start to take it from there. But if you look at the CIP document, I mean, this does not occur until the 2018, is that right, Daniel? So 2018. So. We're far ahead of this thing to collect data and do it the right way, to have a process that works. So as I mentioned, I'm a big process guy, and I think you have a process with data that drives educated decisions. So when we put the process together, we make sure that we do it in a subsequent fashion and keep building upon it, and then we'll present the data, and then present the findings, and then also at that time give the community an opportunity to weigh in on it. I'm thinking of a bunch of things besides community meetings, but has anybody experienced Survey Monkey and some of the things that you can do research like that? But we'll probably use a lot of different factions to try and get feedback. Uh, I, I understand this is going to be a very contentious subject. It is already. Uh, there are folks writing articles in the paper daily on this, and I appreciate that. Appreciate everyone's opinion. Everyone in Kingwood has an opinion. Their, their very right is to give us their opinion. Whether they like the idea or whether they don't like the idea. That's how we're going to make educated decisions. Uh, I'll meet with anybody, anytime, anywhere to discuss this and to make sure that every point of view is represented. So with that, I'd like to take the opportunity. Uh, Nelson has his green card up. If you don't, and Evan back there, if you feel like uh, asking a question and not going to the microphone. But uh, I'll open it up at this time for a uh, Q&A discussion. Yes, sir. If whoever has a question, just uh, proceed to the mic. But if you were to put in a uh, a turn lane on Kingwood Drive, then people could see to make a right-hand turn. Okay. All this, all this, and I'm a cheap guy, by the way. I don't, <laughs> don't spend the money. It involves three new turn lanes, one new traffic light, four closures of crossovers. Two no-turn signs, by the way, at the fire station. All that, if you don't like it from right out of the gate, then you go out there with a bunch of yellow barrels, orange barrels, whatever, and you put them at the crossovers as a trial thing. Try it for a month and see what happens. If it doesn't work, you take your barrels and you go home. If it works, think about it for a minute. It's a pretty cheap solution, and we don't have to tear up all our trees and everything else, sir. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank I you appreciate very your much. passion. Uh, I saw we have your information, and thanks for typing it up. I saw Stan writing down diligence notes, and we will study all these options. I, I do believe there are a number of lights that could probably be replaced. We do have the latest in light synchronization in Kingwood. 
the, the top of the line and latest and greatest that we have in the United States. So we always hear about synchronization of lights, but a lot of that is uncontrolled by the human elements with rain and wind and things like that. But uh, thanks for your ideas. I appreciate your passion. Um, increasing, the, and I'm against uh, it changing any of the traffic uh, lanes or adding any lanes to any of the roads entering our neighborhood. And our neighborhood is not South Woodland Hills. Our neighborhood is all of Kingwood. Totally agree. Okay, so I think the, as far as that uh, picture of roads up there was concerned, all these, I guess, two lanes or four lane roads coming into Kingwood are enough. Um, I don't want any of it changed. It, and this keeps coming up. I remember back with Annie Weissman, and I forgot what year that was, maybe it was 2002, but I remember having the same conversation, being at a similar meeting, this, this issue keeps coming up. You wanted to say something? No, I, I said the reason why it is is because the city has to identify it on a worst first scenario and has to identify it and put the money allocated to us. Then it becomes our opportunity to say, Daniel, we don't want to touch Kingwood Drive. We want to leave it exactly the way it is. And Daniel will then say, we remove Kingwood Drive from the CIP plan as a worst first, throw it out the window, and then the fourth worst city bumps to the number three spot. And we'll never see a dollar of our tax revenue to come to us. What we're trying to do is maybe to uncover a few options that are available so that we can t keep the tax dollars that we earn and maybe do something a little bit differently because I don't disagree with anything you're saying. Uh, I, this has been studied from Addy uh, to Mike and now to Dave Martin. The unfortunate thing for Dave Martin is he gets it right in the middle of his, uh, his term, which is 2018. But my commitment to Kingwood is that this is not Dave Martin's decision. I have an opinion, but I'm not even going to be involved in the process with Stan. I want to make sure there is full transparency and I dismiss myself from anything that they do. And we're putting together a good group and we're going to rely on good information and Dave Martin is not going to have a role in this until he hears from the citizens of Kingwood. So I appreciate everything you say and, and I don't disagree with you. So let thank me, you. And let me, let me yes, sir. I don't have too much more. Um, as far as this being a data-driven decision, this study is going to show that there is congestion. We all know that. There's plenty of congestion coming in Kingwood Drive, North Park, Westlake Houston Parkway, and hell, maybe even Ford Road. I don't go that way. That's what it's going to show. So if this is a data-driven decision, that data is going to show a lot of congestion. I think if we make a resident decision, we decide that Kingwood has grown enough, uh, or the people in the back simply figure out, ride the bus. My father came up with that one. He also lives in, in South Woodland Hills. We got the doggone Metro bus station. I used to ride it when I was younger, and perhaps there are some people in the back who can ride it also. I don't, I don't want to do it myself anymore, so I don't blame it. I don't blame it if they don't. But um, no, no more expansion of these roads. Yes, and we are gonna, we are gonna, thank you. We are gonna collect the data and use the data, but I agree with you, it has to be a decision that is, we're going to use data in a different way, but will the data drive the decision? There will be a component of the decision-making process. Maybe I didn't say it eloquently enough, but data is going to be a component of what we do and when we analyze this thing.